Hi guys, I'm back again. I sure miss you, but I'm here to bring you a lesson. And uh, as you remember, we started this last week talking about Joseph. If you remember, Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery. Uh, his brothers were so jealous of him because he was his father's favorite. His father even made him the special coat, coat of many colors we talk about. And um, they wanted to kill him at first, but they ended up selling him in slavery. So no, now Joseph is in uh, Egypt as a slave. Well, we talked about we're going to learn this week how Joseph obeyed God, how Joseph loved God, and how what the brothers meant for evil, God meant for good. So, now Joseph started out as a slave in Egypt, but the Lord was with Joseph and helped him do everything right. So his owner, Potiphar, who was a very important man in Egypt, made him his helper, and he put him in charge of everything he owned. Everything Joseph did was right. It turned out good. Now, is this because of Joseph? No, it's because God is with Joseph. The problem came when Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph to her husband. So Potiphar put Joseph in jail. Well, even in jail, Joseph didn't sit around and feel sorry for himself. He was still doing God's work. And because he did such a great job in there, the warden put him in charge of all the prisoners. Um, after Joseph had been in jail for some time, Pharaoh had two other men sent to prison. One was his butler, and the other was his chief baker. The captain put Joseph in charge of both of them, and one night each of them had a dream. The next day when they saw Joseph, Joseph could tell they were really upset, and he asked them what was wrong. So they told him his, uh, their dreams that they had had. Well, Joseph, he told him what their dreams meant, and he told the cupbearer that his dream meant in three days he was going to be put, let out of jail. And he says, when, you do, when it happens, please tell Pharaoh about me and ask him to get me out of here. Well, Joseph had to tell the baker that in three days he was going to be hung, and he was. Well, the cupbearer gets out, he's free, and guess what? He forgets all about what Joseph did. So Joseph, for two more years, is in jail. Then one day, Pharaoh had a dream and nobody could explain the dream to him. Well, the cupbearer then remembered, hey, wait, I remember Joseph was able to tell me what my dream meant. And Joseph, he, they brought Joseph to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh says to him, can you understand dreams? Well, I can't, but God helps me, Joseph replied. After Pharaoh had told him his dream, Joseph explained, God is warning you, there's going to be seven years when nothing will grow and there won't be any food. Pharaoh says, what can I do? He says, God's shown you what to do. There's going to be seven years where everything is great. Food grows like crazy and you're going to have enough food for everybody plus extra. So you should save some from each of those years and then when the seven bad years come, there's going to be enough food. Well, Pharaoh believed everything Joseph told him, and he put him in charge of all of Egypt. Joseph became the second most powerful man in Egypt. Whenever he went places, people obeyed him and they bowed to him. Well, Joseph did exactly what God showed him. For the seven good years, when everything was growing like crazy, he made sure he put part of that away to store for the seven bad years that were coming. And when the seven bad years came and people were going to starve, there was food there. And Egypt still had food when nobody else did. 
people came from all over, all other countries to buy food because they needed it. They couldn't grow anything. It's called um, a famine. And it's when either because of a drought, no rain, or because of floods, the things can't grow. Well, back in Joseph's home country, his father and his brothers didn't have any food either. His fathers called his brothers and told them that they should go to Egypt and they should buy some food there. So 10 brothers of Joseph's left Egypt to buy corn, but the youngest brother, Benjamin, stayed with his dad. Jacob had already lost Joseph and he didn't want to take a chance to lose Benjamin too. So now the brothers go to Egypt, and because Joseph was in charge of all the land and who the food was going to, they had to go to Joseph, and they bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Do you remember in the beginning of the story last week, Joseph had a dream that his brothers would bow down to him one day? Well, Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't know who he, who he was, it had been 10 years since they seen him. Well, Joseph said in a mean voice, why are you here? What do you want? So they told him they came from the land of Canaan and just wanted to buy food. When they bowed down, Joseph remembered the beginning of the story that they were going to bow down to him. Because they didn't know who Joseph was, Joseph said to him, I think you're really spies. They said, no, no, we're just here to buy food. We're 12 sons of one father, but one of our brothers is with our father, and the other one's no longer with him, with us. Who was that? It was Joseph, because they thought they didn't know this was Joseph. They had sold him. Joseph told them in order to prove they weren't spies, they had to go. Um, they, one of them had to stay in Egypt while the other ones went back and got their youngest brother, Benjamin. The brothers looked at each other and said they were guilty of what they did to Joseph, and this is what was happening. They didn't know that Joseph heard everything they said. You see, Joseph was speaking a different language. He had an interpreter speaking for him, but he knew what they were saying because he could speak both languages. When he heard them admit what they had done to him, he had to turn away and cried, but he didn't want them to see him. When he, um, so then he took Simon and he bound him up and he had their sacks filled with coin, uh, corn and the money they paid him for the food, he had his men put back in the sacks. They put the sacks of food on their donkeys and they all left except for Simon who had to stay. As they traveled, one brother saw the money he had given for the food was in a sack. Now they were really scared. Would Joseph think they stole the money? Was God punishing them? When they got to their father, they told him everything had, had, that had happened. How they were accused of being spies and how they had to bring Benjamin back. And then they opened up their sacks Every single sack not only had the corn in it, but it had the money in it. Now they were even more scared. Jacob was so upset. He told them, I already lost Joseph and now Simon, and you won't take Benjamin away? I can't let you do it. Well, the famine kept going and going, and pretty soon they ran out of food again. So now Jacob had to send his sons back with Benjamin. He told them to take some gifts with them. They had some spices and honey and nuts. And he told when they saw Joseph, um, so they, they come to bring the presents. And when Joseph saw them with Benjamin, um, he told his men to go get them and bring them to his house. His brothers were scared. They thought for sure he was going to accuse them of stealing and keep them all as slaves. But when they got to Joseph's house, they were reunited with Simon. They were given water to clean up. And they, um, 
were brought to him to eat with Joseph. Now remember, they didn't know who Joseph was. Uh, when they saw Joseph, they gave him the presents and they bowed down to him. He asked them how, if their father was still alive. Then Joseph saw Benjamin, and he had to leave the room because he was crying so hard. When he came back, to, back in, they sat and ate, and his workers gave Benjamin five times more than the other brothers. You see, Benjamin wasn't one of the brothers that sold him into slavery. So the next day, Joseph told his workers to fill their bags with corn and put the money back in their bags and put a silver cup in Benjamin's bag. They did, and the brothers left, but Joseph had his men follow them and stop them and look in their bags, and they found the silver cup in Benjamin's. I think uh, Joseph was messing with them. He wanted them to be afraid. Well, they brought them, and he probably even wanted to get back at them. He was human just like me and you. I mean, Joseph was a sinner too. They brought them back to Joseph, and Joseph told them whoever had the silver cup was going to be his slave, and the rest of them had to leave and go back to their father. Judah begged him, please let me stay instead of Benjamin. Then Joseph couldn't take it anymore. He made everyone leave the room except his brothers. Joseph told him who he was. In Genesis 45.3 it says, And Joseph said to his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. They could not believe they were standing in front of Joseph. Wow. I, he, they couldn't even believe he was alive. They were so happy and so scared at the same time. Joseph told them, don't be afraid. He said, what you planned to do for evil, God used for good. You see, if Joseph hadn't come into Egypt and hadn't obeyed God and become such a good leader... There would have been no food. His, he, they would have been in Canaan and starving to death. But God saved them. Make a happy ending. The brothers went home and got Jacob, and Jacob could not believe that Joseph was alive. It said he was so happy. The whole family came back to Egypt to see Joseph, and they lived close to him. God works everything for good. In fact, in Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, we don't have as big a problem as Joseph and his brothers had with this virus and you can't go out. But God can still use this for good. There's things you can do together as a family, studying the Bible more, becoming closer as a family. Have you thought of picking up a paper and pencil and writing a letter to one of your friends that doesn't know Jesus? There's all kinds of things that can be done. I know that people are asking me questions about Jesus who have never asked before because of this virus. So you guys just use this time to get closer to God um, and know that all of us here love you. We can't wait till we're back here again. I miss all your questions. My stories go pretty quick because nobody's here to say all their questions. Um, but Hopefully soon, with prayer, pray about it, God will bring us back here. Thanks, guys. I'm not going to see you next week. We're going to have somebody special do the lesson, but I will see you the week after. Bye.